Hey there. If you're a new viewer, welcome to my Hacker Rank series. And if you're returning, welcome back. I have received a lot of really nice comments from you guys. I really thank you for that. And I'm really doing my best to help you out in getting up to speed with Python programming. So if you like my videos, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Otherwise, I've got a Jupyter Notebook on the right side. I've got the HackerRank dashboard on the left, and I'm gonna go ahead with the next challenge on collections.counter. Before I do that, I really wanna quickly show you what does counter do. Before I can use counter, I need to import it. So from collections library, import counter. So if you didn't know that, Collections is a library in Python, and if you want to use the counter method, you need to import it. It doesn't come by default inside Python. You want to say, hey Python, go get counter from the collections library. So that's what I have done here. Imagine I have a string. So if you haven't seen my string video, the link is up the top right there. So if you haven't seen my strings video, the link is up the top right. But I'm just going to put some random letters here. And the idea is to find how many times these random letters have been repeated. For example, if I were to understand how many times E is here, so there are two times there, three, four, five, I think five. But you can imagine if you're looking for a specific word in a huge piece of text and you want to understand how many times it has been repeated, I don't think you want to do it using your eyes because there is a method called counter, which is amazing and it does it for you. So it tells you, hey, A has been repeated twice, H is once, and I'm just gonna go to E, and if you remember, I counted there to be five times E, which is great. So remember, you need to import counter from collections library, and then just feed your variable into the counter function. Does it only work for alphabet and words? No, it works for numbers as well. I'm gonna show it to you, but before I show you with the numbers, one thing that I have been meaning to do is to record a video on Python dictionaries. Once I do that, I will put the link up the top right. But for now, let me quickly show you some. What if you wanted to access A, H, F, D, and so a list of the ones that are at the front, which we call them keys in the dictionary. So in a dictionary, you have keys and you have values. Keys are these ones. Values are the ones in front of them. This is the simplistic way of telling you what keys and values are. And we call them key value pairs. So keys and values equal items. So this is one item which has a key, which is M, and it has a value, is one. This is another item. It has the key L and has the value two. So you can easily see that. Now, if I want to get only the keys, so I want to get A, H, F, D, and K, and so forth, I will say, okay, I know that what I have produced here, I understand that it's a dictionary. And Amir just told me right now that dictionaries have got keys. Let's look at the keys. There you go. Those are the keys. How about values? You can see the values. So these were in front of the keys. And if I want to see them both together, I will look at items. So A is repeated two times, H is repeated one time, and if you remember, E was repeated five. So remember, we've got keys, values, and items. But I told you, counter does not only work on the alphabet. Let me just get rid of items because I want to see the dictionary itself like before. It also works on numbers. So if I get rid of this and I make a list of numbers, like this, just some random numbers. This is bad. We can't have double commas. Let's run that. And you will see that number one was repeated two times. One time here, one time there, and we don't have any one there anymore. Number two was repeated only one time, and so forth. So this was a quick introduction on counter super useful method for you to remember. Let's hit the challenge now. I'm going to go into my Hacker rank dashboard, which is on the left, go to solve challenge and read the task really carefully. A counter is a container that stores, element, stores elements as dictionary keys and their counts are stored as values. We did see that right now. I'm not gonna run you through, I'm just gonna read the task. Rahu is a shoe shop owner. His shop has X number of shoes. So he has, for example, 20 pairs of shoes in his store. He has a list containing the size of each shoe he has in his shop. So he might have two pairs of size 10, three pairs of size nine, and so forth. There are N number of customers who are willing to pay X. So customers are coming in. For example, today I will have five customers, 
and each of them are happy to pay X amount of money for a pair of shoe that they're interested in. If they get the shoe of their desired size, yes, if you don't have the size 9 and the customer wants to pay $100, if I don't have it, I cannot sell it. Your task is to compute how much money Roblo has earned. So the input format is an interesting one. Before this video, I read it through to make it easy for you guys to understand. The way it will work, we will receive the number shoe pairs in the store. For example, in this example, Rahul has 10 pairs of shoes. These are the sizes available. So he has a pair that is shoe size two, a pair of size three, another of size four, and so forth. Interestingly, he has one pair of six size here, and another pair here. So if somebody wants a shoe size six, yes, there is. Another person for shoe size six, yes, there is. And the next person, I'm sorry, we run out. And that's going to be built in our code. We will receive the number of pairs, the sizes of pair, pairs, the number of customers, and what shoe size each customer wants, and how much they are willing to pay. So for example, customer number one wants a shoe size six, and they're happy to pay 55. Okay, we can give it to them. We have two pairs of shoe size six. The second person is paying 45 bucks for shoe size six. That's okay, we can still do that. Third person, even if they wanna pay $5,000, we don't have it. We need to be careful. If we don't have that size of the shoe, we can't sell it. And at the end of the day, we should be returning this $200, which is the income for Rahul from selling those pairs of shoes. You can read through the example if you want, but that's essentially what I told. I will make this screen just a bit bigger. Do not forget to import counter from collections because that's what you will need. If you haven't seen my input video, pause this video right here. Go watch that one because that's going to be very important in understanding what I'm doing here. What we will receive from the user. The user will first enter the number of shoe sizes. So let's call it number of shoes and I will receive an integer through an input function. So that's going to be the number of shoes that are in the store. For the list of sizes, I need to make a list of these sizes. So this has to go into a list because the user just types them with a space in between. I need to be able to convert them to an integer after I split the input into single values. So this is what happens. The user gives me the whole line, which is this line in gray. Then I split it by a space and then I convert them into integer, every single one of them, because they are in a string format. Again, go watch input video. And then I make a list out of it. This is the next thing I'm receiving. Then I need to receive the number of customers. So the number of customers, again, will be an integer that comes through an input function. The very next thing is just to make a counter of sizes, which equals counter of list of sizes. What it does, it converts my list into a dictionary. So let me quickly show you what it looks like. If I print counter of sizes, you will see that when I run this, how many pairs of shoes do I have? 10. What is the list? 2, 3, 4, 8, 7, 6, 5. I'm just copying whatever is on the screen. 18. And then how many customers do I have? 6. This is the counter. I have two pairs of size 5, two pairs of size 6, one pair of size 2, and so forth. I just did the print here so you could understand what is happening. We will be receiving customer inquiries on a line by line basis. So I will say for each customer in range of number of customers, because we know how many customers are going to come in, I'm making a loop and inside my loop, I will be getting the size and the price that each customer is willing to pay because I'm getting a six and $55 for that. How do I receive that? Well, that will be through an input function, but I need to split it like before, not split it, split it. And then like before, I need to map the int function because I wanna convert everything to an integer and also convert it to a list. So when this goes in, it comes as a list like this, six and 55. 
So this line converts that to this list, which is great. Once I convert that to a list, I need to check if the size that I got from the user is actually in my store. I need to check that. How do I do check that? I will say if size is in my dictionary, which is counter of sizes and in the keys. So if you don't remember why I use the keys, go to the beginning of this video and understand why I'm using the keys. I want to understand if this size is present in the store, otherwise I can't sell it. So if you can see that there is a size five, great. Make sure I still have size five in the store. So there are two checks. One, did I ever have size five in the store? Yes. For example, did I ever have size 25? No, I have never had 25 in any of those numbers. Two checks. Have I ever had that size? And also, is that size available today? Have I run out or do I have it in the store? Once I do that, I will have to say if in that dictionary, which is the counter of sizes, for that size, I have more than zero, then I can sell this thing for the price that customer says. You'll say, hey, we never talked about total. What is total? Very good question. You need to say, in the beginning of the day, we have sold nothing. If you don't put it here, this will not run. Python will be like, hang on, hang on, I don't know what is that. So you need to say, let's just start our day with zero sales, and every pair of shoe that we sell, let's add it to our sales. Once you do that, make sure once you sell a pair, you go ahead and say counter of sizes equals counter of sizes. And remember, for which size are we going to reduce it? For the size that customer wants. So I'm going to say take one because we sold it. If I run this, I should get 200 with these inputs. Let's go ahead and do it. So we, are, we have 10 pairs of shoes. We have size two, three, four, five, and 18. We have six customers. And customer one, 655. Customer two, 645. Customer three, 655. Customer four, 40. Um, customer next, 18, 460. And next one, 10, 450. And if I print total now, I should get 200. Great. So this code is exactly what we need because we got 200 as expected. Now, what I will do, I will just select it all and bring it down here. Do not forget that we still need this one as well. So let me come down, print everything down here, and then I need this line on the top. Otherwise, it's not going to work. And I'm going to say print total. Get rid of the tabs. Okay. Let's run the code and hope that it will be successfully submitted. Oh, wrong answer. Um, oh, yes. This, this line of the print was only to show you. Sorry, I should have deleted that before. Now let's get rid of that. Great. This one worked. Let's submit it for a different couple of tests to be run. Awesome. That worked perfectly okay. So if you liked this video, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. And feel free to ask me any questions. If the video quality is low, if the quality is okay, but you don't like my voice, or if you like my voice, let me know. That means a lot. Thank you, and see you later.